Also, guys, tip number three, if you guys are curious on how to get so cracked out, get fast tracks in time. What is going on, YouTube Savage here? In today's video, we'll be jumping into my series called Oversimplified. Basically, we're going to jump into some viewer-submitted gameplay, put ourselves in their shoes, and go over the do's and don'ts of what they're doing, the decisions that they're making, as well as their teamwork, and also on top of that, covering the enemies. Sometimes it's very hard for us to analyze our own gameplay because we're pressured, we're stressed out, we rage, whatever the case may be. So this kind of gives you guys a laid back perspective to kind of learn on what to do and what not to do. But before we jump into the gameplay, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolf Pack today. Also, let's leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 1500 likes. And as always, if you guys are tired of playing by yourself, we're tired of playing with randoms because we all know we are make sure you join our discord community and utilize the looking for groups pages to your advantage to go out there and get some wins but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay all right here we are looks like we're landing on a scavenger and i'm a huge fan of doing objectives especially for those of you players that don't really kind of know where to go or what to do a lot of players a lot of newer players a lot of intermediate players we fall into the system where we don't know what to do so we end up running circles around the map one way to keep you guys focused on some sort of objective is to do the objectives, right? To do the scavengers or the supply runs, or whatever the case may be, and kind of get you guys moving out of your area and maybe hopefully run into some other enemies. But here we are in the middle of a fight right now, laying down a plate box for the rest of the squad to go ahead and plate up. We've actually got two teams here by the looks of the of the mini map. All right, purple's diving in right now there are two players in this map in this building we did see them both on the mini map let's see how he plays this instead of diving into a possible 1v2 he's gonna play the window gonna go ahead and throw the decoy change his position possibly he's watching the doors waiting for the enemies to exit now there is a whole nother side there is a whole nother side of this building um that the enemies can leave by and because of our position right here watching this doorway we also can't watch to see if the enemies run out of this building towards the northwest so we're kind of blinding ourselves in this situation. So as far as playing this building, it's very hard for us to do it ourselves. And I do like the fact that our team is coming up to push from a different side. That way, hopefully we can jump in and collapse. Now there is a live ping over in this area. I'm not sure exactly if this was the guy in the building because there was a ping in this area on the mini map earlier, right at the beginning of the fight. So the whole purpose of me stopping the video and showing you guys this is just to show you guys don't dive into a building when you just don't know who's in there. This is a massive building to cover by yourself. It'd be extremely difficult for anybody to do it by themselves. So I like the fact that we played the window. We played passive, waiting for our team to arrive while we tried to hold different exit points. Down, down. Oh, fuck. All right, unfortunate that we went down. Savage, stop pausing the video. Shut up. So basically what happened here, two things I want to highlight for those of you guys who are trying to get in some kind of rhythm, um, if you're new to the game or not, is the fact that we are changing our position of attack. Instead of just holding that window, moving away when they start shooting at us and re-peeking that same window, we're working both these windows and watching the door on the bottom floor as well. Granted, there's a lot more building we could work, but because of the enemies over here, he's not trying to put himself on the northwest side of the building. So we're kind of just playing what we can. So I love to see that. Now, it was unfortunate we went down. However, while he was screaming that the guy downed him, he did happen to live ping the enemy, which is crucial in a fight, especially when your teammates are going into the building. That way they can kind of technically have walls and they can see exactly where the enemy goes and put a lead on them or collapse on them, whatever they need to do to get the fight won. And then hopefully get the res off. Teammate going for the res while our other squad mates finish the fight. Now, again, pay attention to the minimap. There is somebody over here at this shed as well, and he is marking purple because we did spot somebody over on the purple ping earlier. And like I said, when we first dropped in, there were about six or seven pings lighting up um, from gunfire from the pistol, right? Not suppressed. They show up on the minimap. So they're remembering everything that's around them. That way they don't get too complacent in this fight and end up getting collapsed on by a whole nother squad. There goes a live ping at another building. I would assume either that's the second team's teammate or the enemy that was like a little shed ended up working his way to the south to get to this building. Now we're kind of regrouping ourselves and gathering ourselves together right now, getting our place, getting full health, getting our ammo, and then moving on. A lot of players fall into this thing where they sit there for too long. 
or they don't sit there long enough. They'll end up going from one fight to another with six bullets in their magazine and no plates at all. So we kind of just double check the loot real quick. Didn't waste any time just to make sure we had everything we needed. And now here we are to ruin this bastard's day. Now remember, there is a guy at the building behind us that our teammate had marked. It could have been this guy, but even when you're fighting, you want to be, you want to be careful putting yourself out in the open like that. I'm not a fan of the sniper, but I like the scope. All right, that was another team wipe, so I would assume that may be both teams. It seemed like there were a lot more people here, but they could have killed each other off as we were fighting those two guys in the building. All right, so again, guys, I want to implore you guys to get objectives and go for different things. Now, if you're the type of guys get in a vehicle and go hunt down kills, keep doing what you do. But if you guys find yourself in this pattern of going from one spot to another, to another, to another, and you end up just making circles around the map or just going everywhere aimlessly, make sure you pick up a bounty or anything that can help you guys as a tool to go out there, get some kills and get some wins. Having a little bit of direction in this game is crucial and it will help your guys' gameplay drastically. If you guys are constantly using your brains throughout the entire map, going from one objective to another, you guys will be on point whenever you do happen to run into a team. You end up just running around, running up a mountain, running down a mountain, running through an open field, running down a street. You're gonna get fatigued because it's boring as shit. Your brain's not working. You're just on autopilot and you're gonna get destroyed. So again, I wanna implore you guys who are new to the game to get out there and fight. Now, I do talk a lot about aggression. However, I'm not the most aggressive player myself. I'm a very aggressive player I need to be, but I'm a very passive player as well. The reason why I tell you guys in my videos to become more aggressive of a player is if your KD is less than a one. If your KD is less than a one, you need to learn how to fight. So screw your KD, screw the win-loss ratio, try to practice getting in fights. Now, a lot of people may be like, Savage, I don't want to get out there and fight. Stop telling me to play aggressive. You can play passive all you want. Passive players win all the time. But again, once you get into a combat situation and you haven't practiced your gunfights and you made it all the way to the end of the game, nine times out of 10, you're going to lose the fight. So again, get out there, practice getting kills. And a lot of people are like, Savage, this isn't team deathmatch. I get that. But again, can't shoot. How do you expect to win? All right, we do have an enemy in here <laughs> anyway. I'm sitting here running my mouth. I'm not paying attention what the hell is going on. We do have an enemy in here. He was not a team wipe, so we need to get out of the open as fast as possible because the squad mates are somewhere close. Here we are hunting down the bounty as well. And look at, look at the team separation right now. Look at the momentum difference, right? So this is the tempo I'm talking about. When I tell you guys to speed up your tempo and things like that, you can always tell who the leader of the team is based on who's in the front, right? Look at this. Look at us right here. Look at this. We're... 50 75 100 feet away from our teammates and they're just sitting on the hill and that's fine i'm not slaying this team at all do you boo-boos but again you want to get your squad up to pace with you if you have a faster tempo that way if you do push up and your team is falling back you don't get find yourself in a position where you get 1v forward but on the flip side you don't want to have too much aggression and too much tempo to where you do just jump in aimlessly into a building and get your ass 1v forward so there's like a perfect balance between the both savage that's that's really weird shit to say i know but there's a perfect balance in between both that you guys just got to practice again teamwork is the dream work no matter how good you are at the game if you're going off by yourself every single time some players can do that but 99 percent of players you will get destroyed nine times out of ten now we do have buy station next to us and we're going to make the conscious effort to go ahead and push this guy by ourselves and again this is kind of what i was fearing there may be a whole team in here based on how he's just camping like a bitch is probably just one or two of them oh all right all right this kind of is actually working out so at first i was gonna slay them for separation i was like oh come on man y'all gotta y'all gotta be together but honestly it kind of worked out because now the team is distracted on our squad and they may hear us come up depending on if we move with the gunshots or not but we have a really high opportunity to possibly go ahead and clean this up i would rather have one more squad mate with us now look notice how he's adsing right oh that's unfortunate Notice how he's ADSing. Instead of crouch walking, he was just ADSing to slow his movement speed so that his feet weren't just fucking flapping around like Flipper or Free Willy or anything like that. Um, unfortunate that his stealthy approach got destroyed by a bouncing Betty. Uh, campers do what campers do, man. It is what it is. Now we got to play it up. Now, I don't know how many people there are here. Uh, don't do that. Don't. Don't do that. Your bouncing Betty went off. You know there's a player down here somewhere. 
if you want to jump down and push, that's fine. But jump down. Don't don't climb down the ladder, bro. Uh, this man over here tiptoeing his Jordans. What the hell are you doing, bro? Get the f jump. Come on, man. So that was the easiest kill of our life. Green is okay. I'm about to say green. Better not bleed out. I do believe there's another player here. Now, as our squad mates are fighting them, if you notice blue, you can hear the gunshots going off. If you notice blue over here shooting at the enemy, he needs to be pinging the enemy. That would be crucial for us to figure out what side of the building he's on. If the enemy above us was live pinged right now, and for some reason he's sitting right here, we would know that and we would hold on our push because we wouldn't want to get destroyed. Or if he's in the cubby, things like that. Or on the flip side, if he is live ping and he goes to the left side of the building away from us, that gives us ample amount of opportunity to climb up the ladder and get the kill. But we do have stuns nonetheless, and here it goes. One out, there it is, and there goes another one. He may be behind us. This would be very dangerous regardless. Oh, the movement though, daddy. Oh, the movement. Doesn't matter if you're camping, little bitch. You got decent ass movement. You're going to get shit on. And that shotgun. Oh, let me know in the comments what you think about this beast. Still not a team wipe. <laughs> All right, so what's happening right now that's wrong with the enemy team? Well, one, they're camping. Yes, you're correct. But two, they're coming at us one at a time. No. Now, as far as the first guy we killed, all they had to do was throw a stun down here to clear the area, see if there was anybody here. And the first guy we killed in the staircase right here, he wouldn't have died. But they didn't. Why? Because what the second guy did, sitting up there staring at the staircase, they're terrified. Terrified. And again, back to the discussion of why I tell you guys to play more aggressive. Get the camping scared fear out of your mind. Get it out of your mindset. There are times where you want to play a little bit passive, a little bit scared. But this shit here, no. You need to work this building. There's so many ways in and out of the building. Not to mention with all of our teammates out here, if I was the enemy, I would have jumped off the rooftop, one or two of us, and we would have collapsed on the enemy and pushed them in between the staircase. There's no reason for this at all. Actually, kind of what the third guy did. The third guy came up from behind, but it was too late. His teammates were already dead. It was a 1v1, and we had the shotty. Oh. Oh, now, we do have enough money to go ahead and buy, but again, it wasn't a team wipe. These guys may come back for their shit, so I'm not going to hate on the fact that we're sitting here kind of playing it for a second. We can get some free kills, good shit, but if not, we'll go ahead and move out. Good shit. Good down, bro. All right, as far as this fight with prison, though, I wouldn't waste my time. If they're at prison, you down them, what's going to happen? They're going to get res. And same thing with prison. I'll never understand why people sit on the top of prison and just stay there. I'll never get it. It's not fun for anyone. You're sitting passive. You're getting the least amount of fights of anyone on the map. Granted, the circle may favor you, but that's the most long, drawn-out, boring gameplay of your life. And just like us bailing from the fight, it's a waste of time because we get some downs, they're going to get res. Same situation on the flip side. All right, here we are buying a self res and getting a UAV, dropping the rest of our money so our teammates can do the same. We got plenty of money to go ahead and spread out self reses if we want, or we can go ahead and stock up on UAVs. Either way, is personal preference 100%. I'm never going to tell you guys don't grab self reses or don't grab UAVs in certain situations. Again, it's all on what gives you guys confidence. Confidence is what helps people win games. I promise you that. And again, going back to why I tell you guys to get a little bit more aggressive, it's not to go out there and drop 30, 40 kills like everybody. It's to go out there with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more aggression, and also to keep your movement speed up so you don't have to get caught in this bullshit where you're sitting on top of a building playing like a bitch. Now, as far as this team is concerned right here, these four Joe Blows, it, it is what it is. It's unfortunate. We happen to get blessed with the fact that we came up this way, we hugged police station, we got in police station, and now we have the open area to shoot at anybody. These guys right here have very little cover, so I mean, it, it is what it is. Now, as far as the first guy we killed, you see how many crates are right here. He should have been a little bit more um, aware that there's probably another team here, especially with police station it's looking right at it, right next to the crates. Um, as far as the enemy there, again, bad timing, it is unfortunate, but he should have been a little bit more aware and kind of been peeking the corners and things like that. But instead, he full sent the loadout and he got killed for it. Now, see how his three teammates, now two teammates, end up operating this fight. All right. The moment he saw the ping or the moment he saw the glint, he went ahead and dove away. Good reaction time. He did get hit, but he still dove away. Great shots by the AMAX. 
snappy now we're in a position right now where we have one execution one down one kind of damage and one fully plated up i would assume so there's three enemies up and most of them are screwed up so at this point here there's four of us well three of us because unfortunately orange is gonna be lagging behind but it's still a 3v3 but we have the better situation if you look at our plate so right now what do you do go ahead and push this shit. do not give them the opportunity to get the res off and play it up and be able to rethink this fight the whole purpose of players who just play fast as shit, jump in cars jump out on teams is to eliminate the option for the enemy team to actually think about their moves right it's got to be second nature most players that are good at the game need a little bit of time to think very few players can react on the fly to any situation thrown at them so you want to go ahead and hit the enemy as fast as you can do not give them the option to even think about an outplay and here we are jumping out of the window reloading going with a beautiful shot he popping dead silence great move we're going to be up by ourselves for a little bit so you want to go ahead and work the shit out of this and with the shotgun we will have the ability to i really do like the shoddy look at the slide cancels around very dangerous nice shots other enemies gonna be coming in from the left hand side there he is Whoa! boom baby there, boy. light him up i love it good play dude good play <laughs> i'm sorry look <laughs> Just shit like that, right? This is how that team just collapsed. Do you notice what I'm saying? They had no idea what was about to happen. They had no idea to outplay it because they didn't have a time to. The moment we pulled up, the guy had just got rezzed. We instantly knocked him out of the play. GG for him. The next two guys had some separation. They couldn't even have the time to collapse on each other to help each other out. One guy's in the bathroom, one guy's outside. By the time the guy outside was able to push in, it was a 1v1 because we already fucked up the dude that was inside. A lot of you guys get in these fights and y'all might be better than the teams y'all are fighting, but they still kill you. Why is that? Because you take your sweet ass time. You sit there, you're doing algebra and shit. Other teams sitting here coming with an outplay, you're doing more algebra. You're like, man, I'm getting down after down, bro. I'm feeling on fire. Woo! But guess what? In reality, no, you're not on fire. You're just giving the enemy team ample amount of opportunity to out play your ass all right so we do have the most wanted bounty on top of this building it's not a skyscraper i'm not really sure what kind of building it is oh shit look at the uav bro oh my god okay uav comes up holy shit right now we're pinched right we got it we got a three people on the roof to our right hand side and then the most wanted bounty in front of us it, me if i'm pushing this i'm jumping over this wall right here and getting the hell out of dodge from these guys on this rooftop especially with everyone shooting there we go Again, while you're working the map, there's another guy right there. All right, we're next to a buy station. We have about $20,000 between the four of us. We need to go ahead and get some, well, we're actually separated right now. So blue and green, I think that's what he's asking for. I can't tell, but I think that's what he's asking for. But we need to go ahead and get some shit again, guys. Y'all want to keep the momentum up. We got a good tempo going. We're going from fight to fight to fight. And then we know there's other enemies around us. So let's get some UAVs in the air. Maybe get our teammates some self reses, whatever the case is. And let's go hunt these bitches down. Now, the building that these guys are camping on is not a very hard building to push. It's not the easiest, but it's not the hardest. I would definitely do it. So go ahead and take advantage of this UAV and go wipe this quad that's hugging this building like a baby back bitch. Notice how they're separated, too. I'm not sure why one guy's on the ground level. Now, I will say. Now, I'm not against this play because it worked out, but I will say for most of you guys, with slower reaction times, avoid being in the open like this. He's got a really good reaction time. So if he gets shot, the moment he sees a glint, the moment he gets shot, you're going to see him break away and fall back to co cover. A lot of you guys have very slow reaction time. You'll get shot, you'll get your armor placed, and you'll get down to a sliver of health before you even have time to react. If you're that type of player, and be honest with yourself, if you're that type of player, don't fight fights like this in the middle of the open. Fight fights like this, hugging the sides of building or other forms of cover. Go ahead and get the break. Now, I'm very surprised the enemy team's not looking at us. Well, just kidding. There he is in the middle of the street. And here we are in the open, just confident as shit, beaming bitches. And that just goes the reaction time and the snaps. Just snapping on the enemy. We've got a vehicle coming up behind us. We may be able to change our angle to get some shots off on this asshole. Maybe not. Damn, I was hopeful too, bro. I was hopeful too. So we've got two downs. Of course, they're probably all going to be res, but still, it gives us a perfect amount of opportunity to go ahead and push this building, get a little bit closer. Oh, shit. Good play, dude. All right, this is a very unique situation. It's groups of two in three different buildings. One group of firehouse, one group of the building that we're on top of, and one group on top of the bank as well. Easy. Oh, shit! Good movement, good reaction time. Once again, dude, great shit. 
Or could I just uh, stay out cool ghost? Mopani ka denuma. There's a lot of solo players around here, I'm gonna be honest. The separation really kind of confuses me. <laughs> and the main reason it confuses me is because these guys that we're killing don't seem competent enough to be off on their own. Now, you, a lot of you guys are like, Savage, so-and-so goes off by himself and his whole squad splits up and they do really good. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you're right. A lot of teams can do that if they've been playing together for X amount of time, if they're really good at the game. But for newer players to try that concept, with less than a 0.5 KD or less than a 1 KD is going to be very difficult no matter what lobbies you're in. Even if you're in bronze lobbies, it's going to be a struggle. This is full sending. Let me finish what we're talking about before we dive into this fight. So basically, guys, just because you see so-and-so just split up and one person here, one person here, one person here, one person here, doesn't mean you have to do it either. And it's also not usually a good idea. You guys are newer players. All right, but anyway, here we are diving into uh, Fire Station. I believe there were three players here. Now there are two. And we have the shotgun. The shotgun's just giving us confidence that we shouldn't have. And I'm saying that with pure sarcasm. We definitely should have the confidence. I love the fact that we have it. We do have concussions, though. Don't for, I mean, stun grenades. Don't forget to use your stuns. You can throw a stun down there, just bounce it off the floor, let it bounce through, jump down there, pop, 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 start slaying everybody out like the Terminator. That's the play right there, brother. I wouldn't waste any time. We are waiting for an opportunity to push. There's the stun. There's the play I was talking about originally. Unfortunately, we stunned ourselves somehow. Doesn't make any damn sense. So again, in this fight, initially, the moment I would have got up there, I would have bounced the stun off the floor, hit the main room, and then slid in with some confidence and just blasted everybody out. Not to mention, when we did break his armor, I wouldn't even thrown the concussions or the stuns at that point. The moment we had his armor broken, I would have jumped down there and just one tapped him with the shoddy. We also are risking the fact that he may get in the tower. I like the fact that he keeps checking the tower. Oh, he's getting the vehicle to drive away. Wow. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, there he's getting another vehicle. Hey, guys, you know what not to do? Don't run from fights, bro. This is just a shooting video game, right? It's in the hide and seek. This isn't tag, you're it. This is a game where you're supposed to practice using your gun. But Savage, I want to play in bushes and lay in the edge of the circle. And... Stop. Stop it. It's not fun for anyone. I know damn well those of you watching that love laying in bushes, you guys don't have fun with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, guys, tip number three, if you guys are curious on how to get so cracked out, get fast tracks in time. Make sure you buy Sneak Energy, the link in the description below, and use code SAVAGE at purchase. Now, yes, I am sponsored by them. This shit's actually fire. I'm not gonna lie. If they ever come out with a flavor that tastes like shit, I'll tell you. <laughs> this shit's good. It's ridiculous. Woo! Now, here we have us going into a 1v3. Notice again the separation, and we're gonna take advantage of it for sure. Playing the edge, playing the corner, popping the deddy. This man's moving around. We could probably get this double kill relatively easy. What the, what the hell is going on here? Take him out, baby. Nice life being chase his ass, and she's dead. <laughs> that was ballsy. I probably would just execute him. Now we have the other squad. Uh, actually, he was pushing, then he fell back. So now I'm good, fam. We could use the Amax to get some shots off of this asshole. He's just kind of keeping his distance and holding the angle. We could easily blow him away. Watch this. Remember, guys, if you don't have Ghost on, you're vulnerable. Another reason why I keep telling you guys, push together and play aggressive. We now have two downs. There's the glint right there. Going for the third one. No idea if these guys have self-res or not. We need to be careful on homeboy to our right-hand side because he may have self-res on. Or he quits, I should say. Nope, there's one. And that's it. That's all she wrote. So what do you do differently if you're that squad? Well, the moment our teammate went down in the building over here, what should we have done if we were these three guys? We should have pushed them together. I'm going to go ahead and buy a precision strike, blow up that fucking chopper. It is what it is. I can't believe you got the kill with it. A random precision just to blow up the chopper, and this dude literally... Licking the blades with his tongue. Come on, man. You can't be surprised and mad when you die. You should just be screaming at yourself at that point. All right, but this area is basically done. Downtown's basically done. And based off the circle, if you notice, we're kind of on the edge. The circle is going to be rotating to promenade and or apartments. I haven't really paid attention to the big map. We'll see when he pulls it up, what it looks like. 
We have them up first. Boom. All right. So we have us a split circle. What do you do? Well, we could continue fighting downtown. There are probably two, maybe three teams here. We know there's one right there. But downtown's a funny place. The reason why I wouldn't do this and I would actually move over here, that's the play to do, is because of the size of the circle, right? Using the ravine to split the circle, 70% of it is favored, 30% of it is not, right? I, so I try my best to go to the side of the circle that has the majority of the map in it, right? So again, the reason why is because this ravine, granted, there's more cover and stuff there now. But if you cross this ravine, you're still pretty vulnerable from the rooftops of all of these buildings. And even when you come up and cross the street, still pretty vulnerable. Now, there is a chance you guys could cross here and have to cross right back. There is a chance. That's the gamble you have to play. And then in that situation, y'all going to be cursing me out. But I promise you guys, more than more times than none, the bigger side of the circle is usually the favored one. Let's see what they go with, though. It's, there really is no right or wrong answer. As long as we move across the ravine before the circle forces us to, we should be okay. Not to mention, on top of that, we have a lot of vehicles you can use to cross also. So it's not like we're going to have to be on foot the entire time. But as you guys know, crossing places and vehicles still isn't a good, uh, still isn't a foolproof plan. All right, you, have, you have going up right here, going to the high ground of the building. We're still trying to focus on this team that's sitting on that rooftop, hugging it like their baby back bitch. Oh, we have them bailing off right now again. I probably would have been watching the roof. Oh my God, you have balls of steel, fam. All right, let's rewind this. I love how he played that cover right there. It was beautiful, right? So again, going back to the whole concept of parachuting. Most people instantly pull their parachute and just float down a lot of and end up dying, right? We wait till the very last second to pull our chute and try to get the shots off of the enemy. Granted, thank God our team was there to help us out and put some suppressive fire on him because this was a very bad position. But notice how he instantly went to cover and he played it, peeking his head up and down, trying to get eyes on the enemy, always knowing where he's at and deciding which side of the AC unit he wants to work. Boom. The moment the enemy fell back to that AC unit, we were able to do whatever we wanted. We were able to go on the side, get some shots off, and he played that perfectly well. Again, guys, when you're in a fight, stop sitting there stagnant, frozen up, scared shitless in your scope. Start playing shit. Start moving side to side. Movement is king. Positioning is king. Stand still. <laughs> That's for those of you who play Modern Warfare. The original one. But Savage, I love Modern finish. Warfare. I did too. Oh, I play the shit out of it. That's that's a lost oh, art. Can still fighting no bueno. You don't do that anymore. Thanks a lot, Fortnite. <laughs> All right, now we have a squad moving out, and again we're still in a gate king position. But you know it's not a bad circle. The circle still favors us, and we still have two teams on our side of the ravine. We have these guys here. Actually, there's five guys right there. Oh shit, I could go for some five guys. Yo, you want some five guys? We're getting five guys, boys. All right, so we have five guys over here, and we have three over here as well. That's, that's, that's easy eight kills if my New Orleans math serves me correctly. I believe that's eight, right? So we could stay over here. We don't have to get across. However, again, keep in your head that we will. We will have to get across. This Look at, look at this small sliver. That's only safe for a handful of times. So basically what I would do in this position is I would go ahead and fight these guys and or gatekeep them. You don't have to jump down and fight them um, if you don't want to. You can play this rooftop, wait for them to come to you and get some easy picks. Um, but the moment you finish with this fight, if you have time to finish fight, regardless, the moment you finish fighting, get in this vehicle and get the hell out of, out of, out of Dodge. Then again, I, mean, I say, I say get in the vehicle. Vehicles are very fucking sketch, very dangerous. I'm not a vehicle fan. Uh, if you want to do it, do it. I'm, I may cross on foot. Who knows? Well, well, oh no. Dude, no shot, no shot. And also, guys, I want to point out the fact how much my dude is in his map. He didn't just read the mini map. He's constantly pulling up the big map to see where, where everything is at so he can try to get eyes on enemies, maybe ping people, and just read the situation. He has no idea where he got down from. I really don't either. And he pulled the map to try to see if anything was popping up just in case the enemy was not suppressed. But unfortunately, he was. We crawled to the AC unit to get safe, to get the self res. Hopefully, didn't shoot our foot. We're trying to save the selfie right now. Which I'm not against. Um, I'd want both my teammates on that rooftop still holding it to gatekeep these assholes. Also, while Orange is watching this way, um, one of our teammates should be watching here. Because again, because of the circle, this is going to be the only building that's safe. You're going to have three teams fighting for it, assuming no one dies right now. So what's going through their head right now is let's get in the vehicle. Let's get the hell out of here, right? Well, again, it was five enemies. It wasn't one team. It was multiple teams. So I'd be watching for little Joe Blows crossing on foot. That way you can shoot them while they're in the open. 
But again, with saying that, with watching that ravine, you do have to worry. You do have to worry about the guy that just snipes you now. My confused look is going to this right here. I have no idea why he's pushing in the vehicle. Maybe he could be a teammate of one of these guys. Came back from the gulag, landed on a vehicle, getting to his boy. That's possible. This is a bad play um, if that's not the case. And the only reason I say it's not the case is I get it. Do you want to be next to your teammates? I understand it. So I'm not going to hate them. <laughs> And also, again, the guys that were to the south, where the vehicle's at, um, you can almost bet that that team is either A, just, oh, oh shit, either A, they just died off to something, B, they rotated out, or C, they're a camping fire station. And that's what I'd put my money on. I'd go ahead and bet there's a team fire station. This is very unfortunate. So the rooftops that are shooting us do have a nice angle on us. I wouldn't want to play this roof for much longer. We still can because when we go down, we have a little lip that protects us and we don't have to waste our self res, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't play this for much longer than we have to. I'm saying that the circle starts pushing us out anyway. Give me the left hand side right now. See how he plays this. The guy's got a great heady on us. Now again, fire station scares the absolute shit out of me. If the people that are in fire station are playing it right, it should be extremely impossible for us to play it. For us to push it, I should say. I only see one guy shooting right now. We get the knock. We're going to stealthily try to come up from the backside. Oh, my God. And they're on fire. But as long as we win this fight, we still do have a buy station. I'm, I'm imagining he's screaming at his team to buy him back. That's what, that's what I'm imagining he's doing right now. All right, land on our stuff. We do have to go fast, but you don't want to go ahead and land across. Take the gas damage, run in the open. Screw it. We got to get our shit. All right, so let's talk about everything that's happening right now because I have a feeling we're about to push across and not even be shot at. I don't know why, but something tells me that. There was a team on this rooftop. We saw it when we were looking at hospital and they were shooting at us. We saw the tracers going back and forth. So we know there's an enemy team on the rooftop where there was. Um... But right now, with five teams left, us being one of them, with four teams left, they should be on the high ground. One of these guys needs to have a teammate on the building right here, on the building right here, and holding it. Especially this one, since this one's favoring the next circle. This one should definitely have people playing the cubbies and trying to get shots off. So let's see what ha ends up happening. I have a feeling, again, that they're not going to try to peek us, which is pretty drastic. If you guys are in a position to gatekeep the edge of the circle, this right here, and not allow us to get to you guys, you need to do it. Too many times I see people sit in perfect gatekeeping positions and they sit up hiding and they're just their heart beating the wall, right? And then we get closer to them, we get closer to them, and next thing you know, instead of picking us out in the open one by one, it's now a 4v1 in a close quarter combat. Fuck. This is a nice little circle, nice little lip actually. We don't have to cross in the open or anything, but still kind of surprised. No one's shooting. Everyone's camped up. Everyone's camped up or rotating. Alright, so in a position like this, when I'm looking for enemies, granted he knew where an enemy was at, but if I'm looking for enemies in this position, I'm not going to be in my scope. I'm going to sit there and kind of bait myself. All right, we're going to go ahead and suppress the enemy with a cluster strike. Unfortunately, the enemy does not give any shits at all. Not sure why he didn't go for the execution, I'm going to be honest. He's still trying, still trying. Popping the self-res. Good suppressive fire by uh, Christy going in. I love that. And here we are holding this building. The enemy team pushing us up. Thank God for the live pings. Notice that. Notice that. The most important thing about teamwork. Is live pings. I don't care what anyone says. Communication is important. There are a lot of things that are important. Live pings are the most important part of teamwork in this game. It is essentially a cheat code because you know exactly where they're at for a couple seconds. Why not utilize it to your advantage? If you guys are seeing enemies and you're shooting at them and you're not pinging, you're messing up. Even if your teammate gets the kill, who cares? Work together, get the kills, get the win, and get out of that mindset. I love to see how many live pings are going around. You just keep oh, hearing. No, oh, shit. shit. Okay. 
Am cutie de armură, am pus-o. Ah. ah, ce bine. Uite aici restul de armură. I would imagine it's a 4v2v3 right now. În uh, banc am dat un nou. Still, still three teams oh, left. This guy beaming his ass la, off. După mașină. He mounted to the edge of the bus. I didn't really see. Are ceva... Try to re-challenge him again. I'd be very careful because if he's playing the backside of the boxes, it could be dangerous. Going into the gas to avoid the precision strike. No idea where the precision is going to, but he's going to go ahead and move to the next circle. Great play, honestly. Moving early on the circle. We may take a little bit of damage, but it's not that serious. Now we're in a position. This is actually a really 200 IQ play. Now we're in a position. Yes, we're going to take some damage, but everyone, everyone has to come to us. Our two teammates could die right now, and we will probably win the game. It's a 4v2. We know exactly where the team's at. There they are pushing, trying to get closer to the building to get cover. We got one down. And again, this is a position a lot of people will be like, I'm going to go in and push 1v1. Don't. Hold your position. Hold the angle. If you're close enough and able enough to go in there in 1v1, by all means. But y'all don't fall into this thing of where we have three teammates up, and y'all just die off one by one like a couple squads we were soloing did. Oh, Doesn't matter anyway. GG, my dudes. Guys, again, I really hope you enjoyed the video. And the purpose of this is not to show you the highest gameplay and just awesome shit happening. I want to really put you in player. I really want to put you in the shoes of different types of players with different skill levels, different strategies, things like that. That way you can either notice the mistakes that they're making and learn from that, or you can see the shit they're doing and kind of capitalize off that and learn that as well. If you guys are watching the same people play day in and day out, you get into this rhythm of that's all you know how to do, right? Well, there's other people playing on the map with you. I'd like to learn how the enemies are playing. I'd like to learn how my friends are playing. I'd like to learn different varieties. That way you can switch up on the fly should a different scenario arise. But again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel today. Join the wolf pack. Also, let's get this video to 1500 likes. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.